Hi, and welcome to EMS Today 2016. I'm Christina Ackerman from GEMS, here with David Purse, one of our EMS 10 winners. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, I hear you're doing a lot with telemedicine and helping physicians connect to patients via mm -hmm. conference calls so that you can avoid excessive transports. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you've implemented that and what, uh, what drastic changes you've really seen in your agency? Sure. So this isn't our first light bulb. We actually had two iterations of trying to address people who call 911 with non-emergencies mm -hmm. uh, before, and they both involved uh, using a, a nurse helpline. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time we did it when people call 911, the uh, 911 call takers could then divert the call over to the nurse helpline. Mm -hmm. And then the second time we, uh, we did it when the guys got on scene, and they could then get the uh, patient to talk to the nurse helpline. We found there were two problems with that. One was that the, the, the algorithm that the nurses were using was very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, we found out that the nurses themselves were very conservative. And so there was a majority of the time, mm -hmm. the patients were, uh, they were recommending to go by ambulance. And so the firefighters mm -hmm. became frustrated and it didn't work. So what we basically did was we changed it and we put an emergency physician in the uh, decision-making spot and uh, the reason is that we use physicians who work in emergency departments all the time. So they're used to seeing that critically ill patient and then quickly going and seeing the sore throat and getting that sore throat taken care of very quickly because they have to get back to the, the critical patient. So mm -hmm. they have that skill set. Mm -hmm. And it also eliminated any script or anything. And so that's basically where it came from. And we've been uh, largely very successful in avoiding the use of the ambulance. Now, have you worked closely with the hospitals in this process or was it your agency kind of leading the change? This is predominantly the local, uh, the EMS, the Houston Fire Department led the change on this and the hospitals have been beneficiaries of it but they're not really part of the process mm -hmm. other than that they don't get patients that they probably didn't need to be seeing anyways. The healthcare infrastructure we had to work with the most is the clinics. Mm -hmm. So okay. today when somebody calls we could put them in a cab to the ER mm -hmm. or we can put them in a cab to the clinics. So we need to work with clinics to have that infrastructure in place. Interesting. Now, for other agencies out there who are thinking about implementing something similar, what words of wisdom would you give them to start? A, a number of things. Uh, um, most EMS providers have already got an electronic patient care record and they're mm -hmm. using some sort of a tablet. Mm -hmm. That tablet probably has a camera and a microphone and it has the ability to essentially do the, the telemedicine communication with, with the doctors. One of the things that we came up against that we hadn't anticipated was for medical legal reasons, we need to store those video clips. Mm -hmm. That wound up being way more expensive than we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. So there's one sort of surprise to, to be looking for. Uh, the other thing that we found was that ironically, our firefighters, they were slow on the uptake of this. Hmm. So I was an EMT and paramedic back in the 80s, and way back then I was saying, gosh, why can't I just get a cab to take this person to the hospital? Mm -hmm. And so when we when we built this program, I thought the firefighters were gonna jump on it right away, mm -hmm. uh, but they really didn't, and it was interesting. We, we got some guys who were early adopters, and then we used them as ambassadors and went mm -hmm. around to the other fire stations, and we found that there were really sort of two things that slowed down our guys from doing it. One was, because you had a you know, do some more things with the computer that nobody had actually really sat down and gone through it one-on-one -on -one with them. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit reluctant. It's actually really easy, but they just couldn't believe how easy it was, so there was some distrust. Uh, the, the second thing was that there's a little bit of emotional inertia. In other words, these guys say, look at, you know, we always just load them and take them. Uh, this sounds great, but. Mm -hmm. So once we actually got them to hands-on use the computer, find out how easy it was to be able to talk to the doctor, then they had to experience how quick the doctors will be with this. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, dumbstruck. They couldn't believe it. And our numbers just shot through the roof. And so now uh, it's very well ingrained in the Houston Fire Department. Great. Well, thank you again for joining us. And we're really looking forward to seeing more of what comes out of Houston. Terrific. Thank you for having me.